Salut Yannan et bienvenue, bienvenue au dernier corps de l'année. Can you believe it? I can't believe um, that you're all going to be in year 10 next year. Not even next year, in like six weeks time. You've had a really good year year 9, your French has been amazing. And the difficulty I've thrown at you, we've done year 9 a bit differently. And, and last summer I remember planning it all out took like a week of my summer holidays and, and all the time I was like, is this going to be too difficult? Is this going to be too hard? And I just thought, well, we'll just see how it goes. But you guys have done really, really well this year. And the level of French you've produced and some of the work you've done has just been on another level. So I'm really excited about teaching you all in year 10 and year 11 and the sort of grades you can get. Last year, we got the best results Glenmore's ever had, but I know you're going to do even better if we carry on working hard, which of course we will do. So guys, that is all to come the next year. Can't wait, but um, I am going to talk at the start. You still need to keep up your French. You still need to keep up your practice over the six weeks. So I'll talk about your summer homework first before getting into this lesson. Don't worry if you can't see it or find it on Frog Kavaka because I will be posting it personally to all of your houses. So you will be getting that in the post. I'll talk about that now today. It's our final lesson. I'm going to make this a double because our last lesson is Thursday afternoon. So I'm going to set this lesson twice to see what you can do. Um, and we're going to do a quiz today. So it's meant to be a bit of fun. It is a shame we're not all together doing this quiz with prizes and having a bit of a laugh but I mean so be it we'll see each other again in September and I'm really looking forward to it so we're going to end the year on a high we're going to end with a year nine quiz testing a bit of year nine but mainly just testing your French and doing some genuine challenging French stuff to see what you can do and then we're off for six weeks and I can't wait to see you in September so let's start with your homework this is the summer homework guys is called uh, the summer revision pack for GCSE this is what you need to do. You've got some reading activities and you've got some listening activities as well as a vocab. So what I've done in your booklet, yeah, is I've given you what to do every week. You don't have to do it every week. I recommend you do, like you set aside a bit of time every week to work through these things that are not very long. It's meant to be about an hour a week, uh, two hours maybe, and then you just keep on top of it. You could do it that way. I wouldn't recommend doing it on one sitting. I try and do it throughout the holiday. Just get a bit of every time every week to work through. It's too much for you to do on like the last day of the summer holidays. And also, like, there's no point in you doing that. The idea of this is it keeps the French in your head to stop you getting rusty and to keep you sharp. If you just do it on the last day, it's just a complete waste of your time. You'll never get through it. It'll make you miserable before you come back to school. And I just, I'd rather you than do it at all than just do it in a big blitz. So do it every week, save some time, do just a little bit of French. And it will really, really, really make a difference. Guys, this will be posted by the Royal Mail through your door into your house. So there's no excuses for not having it or not being able to do it. You've got to get on this revision book clip. So that is due for your first lesson back. And I'll, you'll have the same teachers next year as you've got this year. So there's no like, oh, they never said it. Mr. Ennis never gave it to me. That's not going to happen. Make sure it's done. Any questions, you can still email me over the summer holidays. Um, I won't be checking on the beach or whatever, but I will be popping into my emails now and again. So I'll get back to you. Right, guys. So that's your homework for over the summer. Let's talk about today. Et voilà, let's do what we always do. S'il vous plaît, tout le monde, dans les cahiers bleus, copiez les dates pour moi, et plutôt inventez les dates pour moi. Copiez le titre du genre qui est un Vienna quiz lesson. Et s'il vous plaît, uh, vous n'avez pas de post-it, mais dans les cahiers, j'ai choisi six. Verb très important pour year nine. Donc, comment dire? I want, I can, I would like, I went, I'm going to be, that will be. Comment dire les six choses ici en français? Mettez la vidéo sur pause et quand tu es prêt, recommencez la vidéo et on peut commencer. On y va. Alors, mes petits, if you listen to me now, you're ready to go. Let's see what you've got for our control de post -it. So, I want is je veux, I can is je peux. Remember, it's our jingle bells verbs, our modal verbs that Sir Ruben sang so beautifully. It goes, veux, 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 ve
ni de vons de voix ça have to do 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 de vons de voix va 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 vu l'on vu les vols etc right guys so you need to know these verbs they're so useful and you will use them all the time in your GCC I would like then is vu l'on in the conditional qui est je voudrais it's such an important phrase I use it every day when I'm in France I went we looked at the past tense this year in so much detail remember it's a motion verb in the past so you don't use avoir you use être and it's got to agree so it is je suis allé girls you need the extra e that's a tough one there's a video on youtube on that if you're not sure what i jump on about numero 5 i'm going to be je vais être it's one form of our future tense and this is the other that will be is ce sera c'est as it was c'est as it is ce sera as it will be what two letters would I add to it to make it it would be? You'd need the conditional, so it'd be an I and a T would be it would be. There we go, right guys, so we are going to have a little look at tenses in one of the activities. We're going to look at some cultural knowledge in the final one, and then we're going to do a video I used to do for the, the grade nine club in year 11. You're going to have a look at that today. Nothing you can't handle, guys. Well, maybe it is. And then we're going to start with a dictionary round. So there's four rounds to this quiz today, but I thought we'd start with a little warm up to test you on what we know. Allo mes buddy, the last uh, quick sound for the year, mais cette fois, c'est un peu plus difficile ce que j'ai fait. Ici, dans le premier colonne, en noir, j'ai quelques questions clés qu'on a étudiées cette année. Et dans la deuxième colonne, en bleu, voilà, vous avez les réponses possibles. Alors, ce qu'il faut faire, il faut dire question, réponse, question, réponse, question, réponse, question, réponse. Question, réponse aussi rapide que possible, vous avez, pardon, vous auriez 45 secondes et les mots en bleu vont disparaître. Donc, il faut être rapide, very quick, 45 seconds is not long to do this. I hear what you're saying, you want an example. Alors, je vais donner un exemple, you've got to read the questions and the answers, so I'd go, qu'est-ce que tu fais en ligne? Je vais sur des réseaux sociaux. Comment trouves-tu Claudia? I find her annoying. Where is it? Je la trouvais neuf avant. Je vais au cinéma ce soir. Tu viens? I'm going to the cinema tonight. You come in? Bien sûr, je veux venir. On se retrouve à quelle heure? And that is how it's done year nine. Right guys, your turn. What I want you to do, put me on pause. Prepare yourselves. Remember, the colors match the colors, which is why I've done for one, two, three, four. Make sure you know what matches to what. When you think you can do this, restart the video. I'll count you down and then I'll start taking it away. You've got 45 seconds until it's disappeared completely. I don't think you can do this. I think it's too tough for you. Put me on pause. See what you can do when you are. Hello, my petit. If you're listening to me now, you think you're ready for this. Let's see what we can do. 45 seconds on the clock. I need to start when I say, on commence. Un, ta, deux, un. Wait for it. Allez. Say about halfway, should be about question five, question six. Not long left, environ 10 seconds, je crois. Et cinq, quatre, trois, finish, deux, un, et c'est fini, mes petits. Alors, Bon effort. Where'd you, where'd you get to? I reckon if you got past eight, you've done pretty well there because of that was really tough. Really long questions and answers. Even like finding the pairs quite tough, like because of all the different tenses. Hope you did well. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. We've got two more rounds. Et voilà, I got good news and bad news. J'ai de bonnes nouvelles, good news, et j'ai de mauvais nouvelles. I've got bad news. La bonne nouvelle, c'est dans le bon Ordre. Donc, question 1, ici c'est les réponses. Question 2, ici c'est les réponses. Question 3, ici c'est les réponses 4, 5, etc. Le mauvais nouvel, c'est pas complète. Il faut compléter la phrase toute seule. Voilà. Donc, 
je vais donner un exemple. Qu'est-ce que tu fais en ligne? What you do online? En ligne, je regarde des clips vidéo. Keep it simple. Comment trouves-tu Claudia? Je la trouve très laide et grosse. Voilà. Keep it simple, guys. I had to put a few more adjectives in for Claudia there. You could say something nice about Claudia, but I don't think even Jenna will do that. So, think about how to develop your answers. Three words minimum for each one. Put me on pause. Plan what you're going to say, but you're not allowed to write anything at all down you've got to keep it in your head and think on the spot they'll still disappear you've still got just 45 seconds préparez-vous mes petits when you think you're ready to take on the challenge recommencez le video on y va alors mes petits let's see what you can do on commence en 3 2 1 allez I reckon we're about halfway, you should be past number five. Allez, toi, deux, un, et c'est fini, tout le monde. Right, guys, we're done a bit at the end. Right, bon effort ici, guys, two rounds down. This will hopefully show you just how skillful you are and just do a bit of revision on last year's, or like this year's key questions and some key answers speaking on the spot. Alors, on va continuer. We're going to move on, right? And, and some of this, we'll be looking at this year's work. We're going to do like one grammar round, but most of it is just general French to see what you can do. It's going to be challenging. I'm going to explain it now. Et mes lapins, all right guys, so if we were all together in BB9, we'd be getting in teams right now, which would be really, really fun, and we'd do it all in French. I'm still going to do it all in French, but just so you know, like, this, this, you're obviously doing this on your own at home, it's meant to be a bit of fun, it's meant to be challenging French, and some of it is really hard, you're meant to be in teams with it, so, like, obviously you do better than, than you would individually, but just, like, have, have fun with it, and, and no one cares what mark you get. It's all just about having a bit of fun and doing a bit of French. So, we're going to do a dictionary skills round. I think for some of you, you would have done something similar before. I would have used some of the same questions. Then, you're going to do a video round. Now, for this video round, this is something I used to do with the grade nine GCC lot. So we used to, lunch times, we watch some videos and talk and discuss them. You're gonna do one of those videos. It is like a proper news bulletin. So it's like Good Morning Britain, but on French TV. So that's gonna be hard, but I do think it would be good for you and it will show that you can handle that sort of genuine French that you do at A-level. Then the casino rounds, this is all about your grammar to see what you've got. And then finally, this is where you'll struggle, a culture round, just cultural questions about France see what you know so the first one is a dictionary round et voilà donc pour le temps de dictionnaire vous auriez 10 minutes so you'll pause me for 10 minutes and have a go at this or at least until you're done let me tell you in english now you'll need to think outside the box for some of these miss mcguire for example tried this out and she couldn't get one and two she needed some prompts to get there um you'll need to think outside the box and it's not quite as straightforward as you think alors je vais expliquer en français you're allowed to use a dictionary for this if you don't have a french dictionary at home this is the one we use for sixth form uh, i'll put a link in the video wordreference.com so i used at university as well so this is the only online dictionary i'd accept any of the translation stuff are rubbish alors qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire donc ici vous avez une indice qui veut dire en anglais clue et j'ai mis quelques mots ensemble et avec les mots que tu trouves cela va vous donner le nom d'un groupe de pop, de rock, d'une chanteur, chanteuse, une artiste, une musicien, musicienne, etc. Par exemple, le premier Tom Shea went to watch this band with his mom, uh, prendre means take, et ça, if you look up in the dictionary, is that. So put it together, take that. Voilà, facile. Now that's one of the better ones I've made. 
some of them are really really hard particularly one and two I don't think you'll get these Miss Maguire couldn't donc <laughs> essayez utiliser le dictionnaire et faire ça guys you've got 10 minutes to do round one put me on pause now give it your best for 10 minutes see how many you can get when you think you're done restart the video and on the next slide i'm going to go through the answers so put a timer on your phone for 10 minutes or just do it until you're fed up with it because i don't think you'll get all these and then restart and i'll go through and explain the answers don't get mad i don't don't bourrage on y va put me on pause now alors mes petits right if you listen to me now you've had a go at the dictionary skills round and either you've got all the answers or you're so frustrated and annoyed by these questions that you just can't be bothered and you just want the answers now so let's go through them don't be rude um some of these like i said miss Maguire couldn't get she needed help support um for questions one and two so if you haven't got them don't worry if you have well done you're cleverer than miss Maguire, but you probably knew that anyway so guys let's go for it numéro un cardigan abeille a cardigan is a cardigan cardigan uh, uh, an abeille is a bee Cardigan B. Cardigan B. Uh, what's short? What would your nan call her cardigan? A uh, cardi. Voila, cardi B. Voila. Alors, numéro 2. Now, this one was a bit mad. Uh, buc, oui, les. So, a buc is a male goat. A billy goat. Yeah? Oui, les yeux are your eyes, plural, but just one eye is an oui. So, billy goat, I. Less from the verb less is to leave, but a less is like a leash, uh, or like you know, like what you tie your dog up with. So, Billy Go I Leash, Billy Go I, le I Leash, I Leash, Billy, Billy Eilish. See what I've done, Billy Eilish. I thought that one was really good. Miss McGuire said it was rubbish. Alors, numéro toi, they get a bit easier now. Ren, if you look this up, is the queen, so it's the band queen. Les Scarabées, if you look it up, it's the Beatles. Note the change in their name and the animal. Numéro 5, I love this one. Uh, it's a B again, so B. Sur means on or on top of something. And dear is our verb to say. So B, on, say, Beyonce. Voilà. Uh, numéro 6, froid is a type of weather. It means cold. Jouer is our verb to play. Put it together, cold play. That one was easy. Come on. Alors, numéro 7. Right, you had to think outside the box for this. Can out is a duck. And it says masculine. So what do you call the masculine duck? You know, ducks, the, the, the grey one. Uh, sorry, the like brown ones. They're called mallards. They're female ducks. Then the green and brown ones, the pretty ones, are the male ones. And they are called drakes. Yeah, drakes and mallards, les canards, voilà. Numéro 8, oh, this is another brilliant one. Ajouter is the verb to add up. Enfer is where you lot will end up. Hell, add, hell, add hell, Adele. See that? I'm really happy with that one. I can tell you're all at home going, oh, I'm stunning, you're so clever. Alors, numéro 3, le, Pierre, roulant. Le is the, easy. Pierre is a stone. Roulant, you might have struggled to look that up, is from the verb rouler, to roll. So the stone rolling, it's the rolling stones. And then numéro 10, this one is a bit rubbish. Juste means just. Danse is in. Bois is like a plank of wood. And lac is a lake. Just in plank of wood lake. What's another word for a plank of wood? It is timber. Just in Timber Lake. I'm happy with that one. Alors, numéro 11. This one is hard. All right. Pouvoir is the verb to be able to. Or to can. Yeah, je peux. I can. I am able to. So, can. Yupi is how you say yay. And then rest is west. Kanye West. Voilà. Kanye West. See what I did. Et finalement, tits is your head. Tendre is to shave an animal if you shave a sheep you shear them yeah head shear and om is a man head shear man head shear man ed sheeran head shear head sheeran 
yeah, that wasn't isn't very good. But there you go, right, guys? Give yourself a mark out of 12 for our dictionary rounds. Really happy if you've got, let's say, six or more will be good because these are mad. If you've got all 12, brilliant, brilliant effort. Love that. That's the first round done. Let's move on to round two. Alors, mes petits, le deuxième temps, c'est un temps de vidéo. Now, this is the toughest part. I've put a link here. It's on your sheet, and I've also put it in the description on YouTube. You have a link to a video. Now, this video isn't that long. It's less than five minutes, and, and it goes through... Uh, and it's like, good morning Britain, but in French. It's a news report about the French and breakfast is completely in French. You can have French subtitles, but you won't be able to get English because you have to pay for that unless you subscribe and pay to it. But I don't think that's worth your time. So this is what we're going to do. Ce qu'il faut faire, il faut regarder le vidéo deux fois, deux fois. Et puis, il faut... Répondre aux questions ici en anglais. Donc, premier, what is the investigation about? I think I just said that. Donc, qu'est-ce que c'est le, qu -ce que le sondage de where did the family live? So they say the region they live in. Toi, what does the dad drink before breakfast? So you'll watch the video, he'll say it. What does he eat? Again, you're going to watch it. What's the word they say? He eats a French thing that doesn't really exist in English, so you'll need to describe it. 72% of French people do what for breakfast? This is going to be tough. So I want you to watch it twice and then see if you can answer these nine questions in English. If you want to watch it more than twice, it's absolutely fine by me. Watch it as many times as you want to see what you can do. Guys, this is real genuine French. I think it's going to be really good for you at A-level. This is the sort of thing you watch and do every lesson and every homework. So get a feel for it, guys. See what you can do when you're done or when you've had enough. Restart the video uh, and I'll go through the answers. Bon courage, on y va. Hello, mes petits, if you listen to me now, you've had a go at the video round and you're ready for our answers. What did you think? If you're thinking of doing A-level French in a few years, that's the sort of level you'll be working at, watching genuine French and being able to understand it. Hopefully it wasn't too hard and you got a bit out of this. So let's blitz the answers. Prenez-vous stylo rouge pour moi mes petits. Et on y va, le premier. What's the investigation about? Breakfast. What people eat for breakfast. Breakfast in France. Anything like that, give yourself the mark. Where do the family live? In the Paris region if you put paris i'll give you the mark but it's like london and greater london so the paris region is called like the ile de france and, and like any big town like greater london paris is just the center and it goes on and on and on and goes out so anything like that give yourself the mark what does the dad drink for breakfast he actually drinks tea but they make tea weird in france but yeah like lipton is the biggest selling tea you can't buy like pg tips or anything like that it doesn't exist no to get it the dad drinks tea for breakfast what does he eat he ate what they called tartine which is baguette with jam or honey or butter on it if you put toast you don't get the mark because they don't toast it it's just a baguette they cut it in half and then they usually put butter on it, sometimes jam, sometimes honey, tartine, they're actually really nice. If you have that of like a coffee in like a French cafe, it'll cost you like two euros. It's like a really cheap, really nice breakfast. And obviously the baguette is fresh bread and I was in France like every day I'd go and buy some fresh breads just because I just like doing it because that's what all French people did and I remember learning that in year seven my French teacher saying in France people go out and buy bread every day and I, I remember saying to her why don't they just go buy a loaf from the supermarket stick it in the freezer and she was like Sean it's not like that like they really care about their food and, and the bread and, and they do so tartine beautiful breakfast Numéro 5, 72%. So, to say 70 in French, and this is the tough bit, there's no word for 70. They say 60, 10. 70 is 70, yeah? And then to say 72, they say 60, 12. So you've got to add the two together. Donc, 72% des Français, what do they do for breakfast? They eat bread. Yeah, bread is still the most popular thing to eat. Uh, numéro 6, what does Maxence have for breakfast? He has hot milk and cereal. Now, they love doing this. They like warm the milk up and have cereal. 
the other thing they do right is they all have hot chocolate for breakfast there's loads of brands like Binco and stuff and it's like hot chocolate but they make it in a bowl so like imagine a cereal bowl full of hot chocolate and then they drink it out the bowl like it's insane but they all have that for breakfast and I was on French exchange when I was 16 so they used to make me for breakfast I had like a bowl of hot chocolate I like bread I would like cereal I like orange juice I like coffee I was like I can't eat and drink all this at like six in the morning or whatever so that's what they have uh, what is pâte à tartiner this is what they call so Nutella is like the brand that you get but the general like chocolate spread they call it pat a tartini so this is really popular if you go to france they love nutella yes they put it on crepe which is what you'd have seen but in the mornings they always have like nutella and for their tartine you can put nutella on it as well it's really popular and when you go to the supermarket and you go to like the aisle there's like hundreds of different brands of it like there's only really nutella in england or like the supermarkets own cheap one but in france there's loads of different brands and they do like massive pots like think like 10 normal nutellas all together that's how big this uh, this would be all right what is t in english so you say t they call it t and then finally 58 percent of french adults drink coffee in the morning so it's just a really french thing to have a cafe uh, now in france as well like you're all english you probably all have milk in your coffee they only really do that at pre breakfast you'd have a cafe au lait which is like a latte so it's like steamed milk in a coffee the rest of the time when you ask for a cafe in france you'll just get like a little coffee like a double espresso a little strong coffee that's all you'll serve unless you ask for a cafe au lait which is like a milky coffee or you can ask for is ask it for my mum on cafe Éloigné, so it's like spread out coffee so it's like a big one like an americano but coffees are different in each country so the french love their coffee right guys so this is really tough a mark out a nine for this great effort so far mes enfants uh two more rounds to go Allons mes petits, now this is by far the biggest scoring part of the quiz. C'est le temps de casino. Vous savez ce qu'il faut faire. Dans chaque phrase, j'ai écrit à une phrase dans un temps différent. Il faut décider si la phrase est correcte ou incorrecte. Par exemple, numéro 1 et numéro 2. One of them is right and one of them is wrong. Je vais visiter les cathédrales ou est-ce que c'est je vais visiter les plages avec ma famille? L'un des choses ici c'est incorrect. Il faut décider soit correct ou incorrect. Puis, if it is wrong, if you put a correction, I'll give you 50 bonus points if you get it right. Et après ça, il faut me montrer votre confiance. Donc, jouer entre 10 à 100 point pour chaque question correct on va multiplier par deux les points que tu as joué incorrect tu vas perdre les points que tu as joué attention i've been particularly mean i've got all sorts of tenses here loads and loads and loads of them mainly in the future but it changes as well so you've got to be careful think about as well when you've got a phrase of more than one tense with more than oh sorry with more than one verb in it you've got to be really careful here right guys i reckon you're gonna lose big points good luck everyone let's give you 10 questions 10 minutes voilà vous avez 10 minutes ça fait une minute par question pour compléter ça bon courage mes petits on y va put me on pause go for it Hello, my pretty. You're right, guys. So, if you listen to me now, your time is up. Let's see what we've got. Now, n'oubliez pas, si vous avez coché la boîte correcte, ici ou ici, il faut multiplier par deux ce que tu as joué ici. Si c'est incorrect, tu vas perdre les points. You don't need to times them. If you lose them, you just lose your bet. So, let's go through it. Let's have a look at the first one. Je vais visiter les cathédrales et les monuments historiques, which says, I am going visit. If you've got two verbs together, the second's got to be an infinitive. Numéro un est incorrect, mes petits. It should be, je vais visiter. So, <coughs> if you've ticked incorrect, 
you can double your points and if you put the correction je vais visiter you get 50 bonus points but you don't bonus them uh, you don't d double them 250 is the maximum you can get if you said this is correct you're wrong you lose your points and therefore numéro 2 ça c'est correct je vais visiter les plages avec ma famille I'm going to visit the beaches with my family. This is one of our future tenses, the easiest one. Alors, numéro 3, it's the other type of future tense. Je voyagerai en avion. Ce sera passionnant. Ça veut dire, I will travel by plane. That will be exciting. Is this correct? So for the future tense, do you have the infinitive and then add the endings on the end? Can you remember? This is an irregular. This is. Parfait, c'est parfait, this is the future tense. So, take the infinitive and then add the right ending on the end. We learned these in January, A, I, A, S, A, O, N, S, E, Z, O, N, T. These are our future tense endings. Keep that in mind for numéro 4. This is in the future tense as well. Nous jouerons au foot à la plage. So, for the future tense, you take your infinitive. And then you add on the endings. For nous, the ending is O, N, S. Numéro 4, c'est... Correct, mes petits. Also, number five is also correct. It's just in a different tense. This is we play football on the beach. This is we're going or we will play football on the beach. Both of them are absolutely fine. Look at that. Four in a row. Surely it can't be five. Well, think about the future tense. It's in the future because it says here, Lani Porchen. Next year, I will go to Portugal. So think about our verb. And what we do for three, for four, we take the infinitive, yeah, got that, and we add the ending on the end, and that's exactly what I've done. So this one is therefore, non, c'est incorrect. It's not right, this one. Why? It's followed the pattern exactly, because Ali is always an irregular verb. What does it change to in the future? Those of you who do Spanish, we talked about this. It's the same as the, the stem is the same as the Spanish verb to go. You should have, oh, that's good. You should have, I will, I will go. If you've written that, guys, excellent effort. Double your points and you get 50 bonus points. Guys, this is really tough today. I know you're losing loads of points and you're really frustrated. Let's have a look at numéro 7. L'été prochain, next summer. J'irai aux États-Unis avec ma famille. So this is in the future again. We've sort of given the answer away here. Allez, change the ear. So this one is correct. Voilà. All right, seven down. So far, so good. Let's look at the next ones. Et voilà. Now, these are really nasty. This is the imperfect tense number eight. What you was, were, or used to do. Now, can you remember how we formed it and our endings? You take the new form of the verb, you get rid of the ONS, and then the endings are the same as the conditional AIS, AIS, AIT, IONS, IEZ, AIENT. Now, this is proper level 7 plus. Have a look here. Quand j'étais jeune, j'aimais lire. It sounds great. Listen to how I say the endings for this. J'étais, j'aimais. They sound exactly the same. But they're different. This one ends in S. This one ends in T. Are they both right? They can't be. If it's je, it's got to follow the same pattern. C'est incorrect, mes petits. Even though you say j'étais, you need to spell it like this. It sounds the same. J'étais, tu étais, c'était. But for the C, it changes to a T. You need to know this. For the je form, it's an S. If you got that wrong, don't worry about it. This is so tough. If you got it right, bon effort. Alors, numéro 9. Quand je suis adulte, when I'm an adult, j'espère être journaliste. I hope to be a journalist as I like to study English. Does this say to study? When you use two verbs together, the second verb's got to be an infinitive. Is this an infinitive? No, it's not. C'est incorrect. You should have j'aime étudier. I like studying or to study. So whenever in French you use two verbs together, the first one's got to change for the person doing it. Second one, you don't change. It's an infinitive. It ends in E-R-I-R-R-E. Et finalement, this one's a tough one. Je voulais devenir prof de français comme un héros. I used to want to become 
a French teacher like my hero, <clears throat> but I shall fail my GCSEs because I am stupid in every sense of the word. This is correct. Voila. So I mixed up the tenses today. A brilliant effort if you got this. Guys, add up all your points. You've won. Add up the points you've lost. Take away your losses from your gains and that total you can add to the other rounds today. Put me on pause and add it all up. Add on me petit. Right guys, the final round is just a bit of fun. It's a culture round. See what you can do. So seven quick questions. Ideally, you wouldn't Google these. You're going to see if you know it yourself. See what you can work out. Number two is a bit of a trick question, by the way. Be careful with this. If you're using your planners, it, it, it's a river that goes through France, but it's not mainly in France. So work through. You should know the answers to all seven of these. I'll give you five minutes on it. When you think you're done, unpause the video and we'll go through it. Allez, on y va. Allons, mes petits. Right, guys, let's go through the answers for our culture round. You'd be surprised how many people speak like brilliant French in year 11, but can't tell you the answers to these key things. So let's have a look through. The capital city is Paris. If you got that wrong, I don't know what to do with you, to be honest. Oh my God. The largest river in France is actually the Rhine. It is a German river, but it goes through Strasbourg, which is like by our partner school so it actually goes through france a little bit so that's why it's the largest river that goes through france even though it mainly goes through germany i think the other one's probably the loire but there's loads and loads of rivers in france but rhine is the answer the two mountain ranges are the pyrenees and the alps so the pyrenees are between france and spain right at the bottom and the alps go through like switzerland and italy on that border to the west uh, to the east the soldier who became Emperor of France and was defeated at Waterloo in 1850 is a very famous Napoleon Bonaparte. Surely you know his name. Really interesting character in French history. Name one dog breed of dog that originates from France. There's loads. I saw once this really cool poster when I was in France about dog breeds and all like the French names for them. And I was going to buy it, um, but I thought I'll just get it off the internet. Never seen it again in my life. But here we go. These are the dog breeds that come from France. The Barbie. The Poodle, French, the Basset Hound is French, French Bulldog, and then the Papillon is the one with the funny ears. And Papillon literally means a butterfly. And you look at this dog's ears, they look like a butterfly. Um, I'm sure you know them. Google Papillon Dog and you'll see what I mean. Papillon means butterfly. A Papillon de nuit is a butterfly of the night, which is what French call moths which i think is beautiful because moths are quite scary and horrible but if you call them papillon de nuit that's a bit cooler all right so france touches two seas as well as the english channel the french call the english channel la manche which means the sleeve like the sleeve on your shirt because it's like in that shape so france touches two seas it is the atlantic ocean and the mediterranean sea those are the two you need to know and then name five countries who have French as their official language. There's loads of them. Here's some of them. So France, Canada, Belgium, Switzerland, Congo, Ivory Coast, Madagascar, Cameroon. I've got some more. Haiti, Benin, Senegal, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger. There's, there's loads and loads of them. Five is all you need. Guys, give yourself a grand total and see what you've got. I hope today's quiz has been a bit of fun in the final week. Right, guys. So it's been an absolute pleasure teaching you this year i've loved it i've looked forward to our lessons i hope you've got a lot out of it too and it's a shame corona lockdown came but i think the effort we've made in these video lessons to try and catch you up and keep you going have really been worth it at times i've been recording i'm thinking oh good but i really look back and i'm happy i've done it because you've got the potential to do so well in year 11 sevens eights nines you could all get a top mark you've got the talent and you've got the french it's just a matter of two more years hard work and the hard work starts here your summer revision pack don't see this as homework or something to mess up your summer it's meant to be a good thing it's giving you a bit of french practice no stress just have a go see what you can do and enjoy these activities and enjoy practicing french you've still got memorized there's still loads of things you can do 
just enjoy it as much as you can and practice French as much as you can. Over the summer, you can still email me. It might take a few days for me to get back to you, but you can still send an email with questions or anything French. It'll be great to hear from you all. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in September. We don't know how normal it will be, but we'll definitely have French lessons. And that's something to really look forward to. Um, so yeah, have a great summer. Be safe. Yeah, don't like hurt yourselves or anything or die. Uh, and make sure you're ready for September because it's going to be a good year, year 10 coming up. Can't wait. Right, guys, see you in September. Merci, au revoir et bonnes vacances.